Hello and welcome to another edition of UFO Video Addicts. Let me give you a quick preview of what i got coming up in this video. Well, the first is uh, two guys who were out on a boat in Aguadilla and they um, captured this strange blue light in the ocean. And in it, they claim that they see a uh, humanoid figure in it. So we'll check that out. Also have this video here of um, some guy in the UK who believes he captured um, UFOs coming out of a portal in Manchester, UK. And then this is a video about the um, UFO sighting at O'Hare International Airport a couple of years back where several pilots and ground crew from, I think it was United Airlines, um, saw what they claimed was a saucer over the airport, hovering over the airport. And when it took off, uh, it was an overcast day. So um, the saucer, you know, went through the clouds and created a perfect circle. Also have this video here of a couple different people capturing, I mean, what looks to be a meteor. But, uh, you know, when you look at these other um, clips of it, you can see that it's going or flying horizontally. So, yeah, I don't think it was a meteor. And let's see, and then now this is a strange video here, and, and you know what, I'm not 100% convinced that it's real. Could be, again, I, you know, I don't know, the links will be in the description so you can check it out yourself. But um, these boaters claim to uh, have captured like a, a round sphere coming towards their boat. You know, the, of course, people are going to think it's a USO, but and it's definitely not a fish. But again, yeah, I'm not 100% convinced it's real. And this is a video that's you know been out for a while because I you know I remember seeing this well wow, maybe like over 10 years ago. And then let's see, I got this video here. This was um of the full version. Now I believe that I had posted a short of this where these guys uh you know I'm trying to figure out what what country this is. I have no idea, it's crazy language. But anyways, um yeah, they're on this uh, mountain, and uh, I think they hear some noises, so they peer into this little crevice, and they freak out because they think they see a gray alien. But, you know, after looking at it for a while, you know, this thing could be like an owl, like a baby owl or something. <clears throat> Not too sure. Also, I have this video of Jaime Masson, uh, several different videos of, um, you know, UFO, these long cylinder-shaped UFOs and other um, saucers flying around Popocatepetl volcano and some of them are actually going into the volcano and this has been happening for years let's see and then this is a um, video of uh, Grant Cameron talking about Robert Emmenager's uh, clip where Emmenager was like a I think he was like a commercial director or something like that and for whatever reason the government came to him wanting him to make a like a film or documentary about uh, UFOs. So they gave him some clips. And um, in one of the clips that they gave him, it, again, I have no idea whether this is true or not, but uh, it was supposed to be what, uh, what appears, or, or what they claim is a um, UFO landing at the Holloman Air Force Base. And let's see, and then I got this, I had a couple from Reddit. These are 20 UFO picks from 1970 and 1979, Best Collection Series, I Will Make You Believe, Part 3. And then this one here is um, about this guy, and it, is, it really read an interesting perspective on the involuntary fear experienced by the human body when exposed to ETs offered by an alleged German government insider. Yeah, this guy talks about the first time he uh, met a gray alien and how... Yeah, his, yeah, he said, you know, he had, he freaked out and it took him a while to get used to uh, seeing these, you know, grays. So uh, apparently, you know, they do try and um, like acclimate people into uh, working or, or you know, when they plan on working with, uh, with some of our advanced neighbors. Again, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these insiders that, you know, reveal stuff with, that they know about. UFOs again. It, it doesn't make sense that that these beings are coming from you know all these distant planets. I mean, not to say they don't, because I'm sure you know they do. But like, I'm a firm believer that you know anytime you're dealing with uh, 
these grays or you know any other quote unquote extraterrestrials that can breathe our air they're completely able to um, walk around on our gravity yeah that I, you know that I believe that they're from this planet I don't think they're visiting you know otherwise you know I mean we would have to assume that you know whatever planet they're from has the same atmosphere as earth and the uh, same you know uh, gravity as earth and then let's see I got this one here this is nothing to do with you well, actually it it seems to have nothing to do with UFOs right this is a, a video from Raytheon displaying their high energy laser mission scenarios but like I've said before you know um, whatever the military claims is most likely just a cover story you know that there's always a uh, underlying reason that uh, they don't want people to know about for, you know, for pretty much anything they do. And uh, yeah, and that's gonna be it. So, uh, well, yeah, before I start, you know, I just wanna say if you appreciate the time and effort that I put into bringing these videos or putting these sites together for you, if you can uh, give it a like, share, and most importantly, please subscribe. It really help me out. Anyways, uh, let's go to this one here. Now, this is from TikTok and uh, I'm going to play the whole thing because I don't have to worry about any copyrights with this. But let's see, do I have audio? I think I do. Let's check this out. The light was to bright and moving different directions. Yeah, the brother, the moment, right? Submarine. You know, real quick, I just want to say, um, Agua Dia, Puerto Rico is also where they do have a, um, a video of a spherical craft, you know, flying, flying around the town and then going in the water and coming out of the water and then it splits in two. But I'm, you know, pretty sure I've posted that video before. No se le cambie mucho. When they spot a creature like him, swimming in the deep water. Era eso, era eso, era. Era, era, era eso. Everybody. Era, everybody. Míralo. Yeah, this yeah, this definitely looks like you know, initially I thought it was just a uh, optical illusion from the waves, but 
looking at this again, <clears throat> it definitely looks like some type of humanoid. Wow. Yeah, you know, this uh, light is way too bright to just be like a diver um, under the water with a uh, spotlight or something like that. There's no way that's uh, that's that. That's something luminous that they captured. Anyways, let's go to this um, video here. This is UFO and Portal over Manchester, UK with orbs coming out. Screen here. <laughs> Yeah, so now this is the actual, you know, what we were looking at before was the close-up. This is the original. You see, I don't, I'm not 100% convinced that was a uh, portal. I think that was just, you know, all of these lights uh, clumped together. Anyways, this is as much as I want to play with that. Link will be in the description. Let's go to this one here. Okay, yeah, so now this is talking about the, um, the sighting at Chicago International Airport. Let me just start this right here.
Connecticut Maintenance 44. Catch 44. Thank you. All right. 44 is going around the north port. Excellent. Uh, you got Eagle and Skywest over here coming around this way. He's turning in no back. They really got no other gate holes. All right. Somebody reported a UFO or a flying disc above Charlie Conquest. Seriously. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so nobody can, eyes, nobody can see it, but you squash him. All right. Um, and <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Gateway 5668. 5668, go ahead. Yeah, look out your window. Do you see anything above United Concourse? They actually, believe it or not, they called us because they, somebody observed a flying disc about a thousand feet above the uh, Gate Charlie 17. Do you see anything over there? Not that I can tell. Okay. Yeah, I thought my job was stressful. <laughs> no, we saw it a half hour ago. We saw it. A whole bunch of us over at the uh, Charlie Cox Hotel. Really? Yes, did. Who's this? This is United Mechanics. Mechanic. Remember, before this audio, United Airlines and the FAA both denied that a UFO sighting had even been reported. Following this discovery, the FAA issued a statement attributing the sighting to a weather phenomenon. Yeah, and you can tell by the way those pilots were, um, you know, uh, treating it as a joke that this is before the uh, the stigma was lifted. But anyways, uh, that's as much as I want to play with that. Let's go to this one here. This is, yeah, again, this is this uh, fireball f flying across the sky. Check this out. Kristen Allen recorded Wednesday after five in the evening. She captured it southbound along Boulevardy Road in North San Antonio. Looked like it was going straight down, but very far away. Allen sent the video to her husband, Ryan. He posted it on social media and found out. Several other friends all over you know, South Texas, San Antonio, Hondo also saw it. Samantha Gonzalez shot this photo in Hollywood Park while Christina Alexis recorded her own video nearly 60 miles away in Hondo. In her clip, the flying object appears to radiate a red glow across the sky. The, uh, yeah, again, you can see this thing is moving horizontally, which means it's flying. You know, it is not, it's not a meteor that's falling to Earth. It's some type of fireball which is flying, flying through the sky. Further, I think, west of here you went, the more visible that, that tail was on it. The Allens aren't sure what the flying object is. Their two sons have their own speculate. Anyways, that's that. The link will be in the description. Let's go to this one here. Okay, now this is a strange one. Like I said, it's, you know, it's this a sphere that um, seems to be coming towards the boat. Let's see, we're already at the full, let me see if I can, yeah, you know, again, this, this, vi this video came out so long ago, you know, that uh, the video is horrible. See the slow down. Yeah, you know, one thing about these videos, a few years ago, again, I've said this before, YouTube has changed. Because if you do any uh, searching on, on, you know, using YouTube search for UFO related videos, all they're going to do is show you, you know, like the stuff from like the History Channel and you know, other nonsense. Uh, again, you know, I've been doing this a long time. So, uh, you know, I saw the change, you know, years ago, when, whenever I would do search for UFO videos, you know, a, a lot of individuals videos would come up and even some of the most strangest one. But yeah, some of those videos that used to be easy to find are almost impossible to find now. Anyways, okay, so this one here, like I said, I've, I know I've, I, I posted the short of just this little clip here. 
But uh, in this little crevice, um, they come across again what what they claim is a uh, is a gray alien. I'm not 100% convinced, but anyways, check this out. Hocam bu ne ya? Onu. O mu? O ne? Hocam. Olay içeride bir şey var. Bari burada bir şey sıkışmış bak. Hayvan mı acaba? Taşın içinde bir şey var. Arkadaşlar gördünüz mü? Hayvan mı var? Taşın içinde bir şey var. Yeah, you know what? I think that was a bird. I think that was yeah, either a bird or a baby owl. Owl. I don't think that was a UFO. Or, I mean, an alien, a gray alien. Anyways, yeah, so yeah, if you want to check this out, here's the timestamp. You know, it's just around uh, here. It's 2826, so you can go to the 28-minute mark and find that. Now, let's go to this one here by uh, Jaime Masson. He's captured several different uh, videos of these craft flying around or entering into uh, Popocatépetl volcano. Sin duda, el Popocatépetl es uno de ellos. Los portales magnéticos o dimensionales son lugares a través de los cuales se abre un hoyo en el espacio-tiempo, en el universo, que permite moverse en lugares distantes. El también conductor posteó un video en el que explica que en la Tierra se han detectado zonas donde existen portales magnéticos o dimensionales. Mencionó que, en diferentes fechas, en el cráter del Popocatépetl se han detectado objetos que aparecen y desaparecen. Señaló que el 14 de octubre de 2021, las cámaras de webcams de México captaron un cilindro de dimensiones considerables que aparece del lado izquierdo del volcán y posteriormente desaparece al acercarse directamente hacia el cráter del mismo. Asimismo, el 24 de noviembre de ese mismo año, en tres momentos diferentes, tres objetos en... Yeah, that, you know, those cylinder-shaped crafts are supposed to be around 5 meters. Uh, yeah, 5 meters, which is, I think, like 2 and a half to 3 forma de cilindro aparecieron sobre el volcán y en segundos se desplazaron y desaparecieron. El equipo de Tercer Milenio de Jaime Maussan agregó que, tras la intensa actividad del Popocatépetl en los últimos días, se han captado extrañas formas luminosas, aparentemente entrando y saliendo del cráter mientras se registra la salida de material incandescente del volcán. Asimismo, durante una explosión registrada la madrugada del 15 de mayo, un objeto luminoso parece entrar directamente por el cráter del volcán. Yeah, so like this one, I think this is supposed to be like five meters, which is like three miles long. And you know, like I said, you know, I've been putting these videos up for years, and there's multiple videos of crafts coming in and out of the volcano. So, you know, I said this before, if you see something coming in and out of anything, right, it's, it's got to be because that's, there must be, they must live there. You know, this must be an entrance. And if these beings have been on this planet for, you know, 100,000, a million years or whatever, you know, some um, long amount of time, you know, they, they, they've obviously figured out how, how to overcome any damage from heat. You know, even though, yeah, even though, gee, yeah, just because we, just because our species you know, isn't able to uh, to combat that doesn't mean that that you know another more advanced species couldn't have. But anyways, uh, let's go to uh, this one here. This is yeah, this is Grant Cameron talking about these this clip that uh, Robert Emmenager told him about that again appears to show a um, a craft landing at Holloman Air Force Base. Eight seconds of film in there, and he goes, "Well, yeah," and I said. You told me to pull the film. You told me it was sent back to the Pentagon. And he said, well, it did. He told me this whole story about the guy going across the country in this small dats and taking the film back to the Pentagon. I said, but there's eight seconds of film in the documentary. And then he said the key words. He said, but it didn't show anything. And I said, oh, no, he said, it's background. And I said, background? What do you mean it's background? And he said, it didn't show anything. And what it is, is you see the hills of Holloman, and you see this object, this brilliantly lit object at six o'clock in the morning coming over the hills, but it's in a distance. 
So it, you don't see it close up and you don't see the alien when the alien gets out. That's the classified part. So they want you to know that all of that happened and they allowed them to use this the eight seconds of the film, but the rest of the film, the classified part was pulled. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, let's see, let's go to this one here, showing this craft. No, I can't make this um, any bigger, so. Link will be in the description so you can check it out. This is from 1970, Japan. 1970, Bremington, Washington. Uh, I think this one was over um, Argentina. Las Lunas, New Mexico from 72, South Carolina, March 7, 1973. This is a Billy Mara uh, photo from 1975. Let's see, Colfax, Wisconsin, 1978. And look how sharp these images are, you know? So I still can't believe there are people who go, oh, all the photos are blurry, hard to see because you haven't seen these. Now this one's definitely blurry. This is from Finland, 1979. Yeah, but yeah, just because, you know, as you as an individual, you know, may not have seen uh, high quality, clear images of UFOs, doesn't mean that they're, they, aren't, they aren't out there. Well, look at that, three of them on this one. Oh yeah, you know, this is a, uh, I think a Billy Meyer image too. This looks like Switzerland. Yeah, and you remember, you know, not all of these are visitors. I think the majority of them are the um, the advanced species that share the planet with us. Anyways, that's that. Let's go to this one here. Okay, yeah, this is an interesting perspective on the involuntary fear experienced by the human body when exposed to ETs offered by an alleged German government insider. I think this is, yeah, this is also with Emery Smith. Tim, not many people claim to have worked with the Greys and have an ongoing relationship like you do. Can you describe for us your first encounter with the extraterrestrials known as the Greys? So some meetings were with only one individual grays somewhere with um, like up to three of them some other meetings took place place differently but the first one was me sitting there and waiting what's happening and freaking out in the moments when a being slowly approaches you which is scary to say the least the energy in the room seems to change and i think that's also what a lot of people experience when they have those encounters with grace, that they naturally feel threatened or naturally feel scared or a deep sense of horror, horror uh, runs over the body. Imagine a fresh, hot summer day and you go into an ice cold pool. I mean, at some point you enjoy the, the cold pool, but the moment you get into the, you're thrown into the cold water, it's, it's, it's a shocking moment. So that always, has always been the case. Um, but the first time it was just me sitting there and then this being approached me very slowly, very neutral. I think because the first meeting is all about experiencing the stress and the feeling that you have, it didn't take too long. Maybe, I imagine maybe like 15 minutes to half an hour or something just to, you know, the body needs some time to get used to a frequency just as when you get you know, put into cold water and the body needs like 10 minutes to adjust to that. It's the same way that your body and your mind um, starts functioning quite normally after uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Before that, it's just this flight or fight response where you want to just run out of the room or scream like, you know, like totally in, in horror or something. So you're sitting in silence for a few minutes. So you can adjust energetically to the gray? Yeah, because your body reacts. Even if you know what's going to happen, if your body is pumping adrenaline, it's pumping your heart, blood is, you know, it's going way up. Your body is, is 
freaking out. It's it's not that you're on a roller coaster without having any bodily reaction at all. Might be if you like doing the roller coaster like a million times and that over a long term that your body is bought to that experience and at some point it's like yeah all right. But I think that takes a long time and the body always reacts to that. Even when you you know when you're at the cliff and you want to you want to jump into the water and you know everything will be fine because that's water. It's still the body is is like bringing you back and saying no, I don't want to jump that. No, no way. We're gonna kill ourselves. No, don't do that. And that is something that is it takes a while to overcome that. And I went through you know deep fear and deep horror and and stuff for a month. Did you talk? Did you have telepathic communication? How did that interaction play out? I felt that. There's some sincere interest. You can sense that there is a individual soul or an individual consciousness inside that is communicating with you that has at times deep emotions about things, at other times doesn't react the way you're used to um, see people react emotionally. Mm -hmm. You know, Emory Smith uh, claims that he... I used to retrieve um, alien bodies and dissect them, or parts of alien alien bodies, and uh, study them. Or he didn't actually. He didn't study. He just dissected them and then sent them out to be studied. Anyways, let's check this one out here. This is uh, yeah, Raytheon displaying their high energy uh, equipment. Of course, you know I believe that this is all being done. Or, you know what? There might be some. That are you know that will be used for um, for weapons, but I think the majority of these are used to try and uh, bring down craft. If I was a uh, weapons weapons manufacturer, uh, th to, to me, this is just all money. All I'm seeing is money, money, money. Because, you know, I've, this is something that I've come to learn. War is good business. as I want to play, play that. But this is money, money, money. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And like I said before, you know, if you appreciate the time and effort that I put into these videos, bring these uh, clips to you. Please uh, like the video, share the video, and most importantly, please subscribe. Until next time, take care.